Prince Harry has taken part in his first royal engagement without Meghan in Australia today, as he climbed Sydney Harbour Bridge along with Prime Minister Scott Morrison to raise the flag for the Invictus Games 2018. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are currently on their first major international royal tour together and the schedule for the fourth day of their landmark trip has been incredibly busy. Earlier this morning, the pair attended a mental health awareness session on the iconic Bondi Beach and visited a girls' school in Sydney West. But for the afternoon engagement, Meghan watched her husband, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and three Invictus Games athletes climb the iconic bridge. Prince Harry and his party took about 13 minutes to reach the top and they reportedly climbed more than 1,300 steps. Once he stood before Sydney's picturesque skyline, Prince Harry raised the Invictus Games flag to officially launch the multi-sport event. Prince Harry created the international sporting event in 2014, for wounded, injured or sick armed services personnel. His inspiration came in part from his decade-long service with the British Army, which included two tours of duty in Afghanistan. The official opening ceremony will take place on Saturday, October 20 at 7.30 p.m. at the famous Sydney Opera House. Prince Harry is expected to give a speech in front of the fans and athletes during the opening of this year's Games and will return for the closing ceremony on October 27. More than 500 competitors from 18 nations will compete in 11 adaptive sports at venues across Sydney between October 20 and 27. At last year's Games, the Duke officially introduced his new girlfriend Meghan Markle to the world by bringing her along to one of the events. One year on, the pair are happily married and expecting a royal baby. Their major overseas trip comes only a few days after they announced Meghan pregnancy. Kensington Palace confirmed the rumors on Monday, claiming the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in the spring of 2019. The palace wrote on Twitter, Their Royal Highnesses very much appreciate all of the support they have received from people around the world since their wedding in May and are delighted to be able to share their happy news. Prince Harry has mock scolded a newsreader for giving his wife Meghan Markle flowers during a surprise stop on the royal tour. Deviating from their schedule, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex paused to greet the small crowd outside Taranga Zoo this morning. Among the crowd was Nova 969 newsreader Matt de Groot, whom breakfast hosts Fitzy and Whippa had tasked with gifting the $500 bunch of flowers to the parents-to-be. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex decided to stop after de Groot's bouquet caught the eye of Meghan, causing Harry to joke about the size of them. You can't give flowers that big to my wife, what is that all about? Harry joked pointing a finger in mock anger at de Groot. As the crowd laughed Meghan added, thank you for my flowers. De Groot told News.com. Oh he was surprised his last minute plan brought him so close to the royal couple. During an earlier attempt to give the Duke and Duchess of Sussex the flowers outside Admiralty House, police told de Groot he would be crash-tackled by security if he got too close. But outside Taranga Zoo, Meghan and Harry were more than happy to accept the bouquet. She seemed genuinely excited and flattered by the size of the flowers and her people, who were with her, pointed out that she loved the fact that they were huge, de Groot said. Both Meghan and Harry appeared buoyed by the fact that they had announced their pregnancy the night before. Meghan in particular just couldn't stop smiling. Every single person was saying congratulations, de Groot said. She wasn't hiding it, she didn't want to shy away from it. She seemed genuinely enthusiastic about the fact that she could now share the news. Harry was the same. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have been tacked for announcing their happy news, on International Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry revealed via Kensington Palace this morning they are expecting their first child together in spring 2019. A spokesman said, Their Royal Highnesses are very pleased to announce the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in spring 2019. Their Royal Highnesses very much appreciate all of the support they have received from people around the world since their wedding in May and are delighted to be able to share their happy news.
the Queen, Duke of Edinburgh, Prince of Wales, Duchess of Cornwall and Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are delighted for the couple and were able to congratulate them on Friday at the wedding in person. Ms. Doria Ragland is very happy about the lovely news and she looks forward to welcoming her first grandchild. Meghan is in good health and has had a successful 12-week scan, with news of the pregnancy coming just five months after she married Prince Harry at Windsor Castle on May 19. But hundreds of upset mothers have flooded Twitter to criticize the timing of the announcement, saying it could not have come on a worse day. At Jinnah 1968 tweeted, A bit insensitive if you ask me. It's baby loss and bereavement day. At Laney Burrow 77 replied, Absolutely. Prince Harry and hashtag Meghan announce excitement at hashtag pregnancy on baby loss and bereavement day. Hashtag Meghan Markle at pregnant. And I thought it was bad enough that they couldn't wait more than three days to knock Eugenie back into place. Hashtag appalling to me. At Mags underscore Griffin added, was just about to tweet the same thing. Of all the days to release the news, very insensitive. At Kensington Royal. At Josh Rippen tweeted, really thoughtful of Harry and Meghan to announce their pregnancy on baby loss awareness day. Hashtag infertility sucks hashtag baby loss awareness hashtag pregnancy hashtag miscarriage hashtag trauma. But Ruth Bender at Deke, national director of the Miscarriage Association, which aims to raise awareness around pregnancy loss, defended Meghan and Harry, insisting they were probably unaware of the significance of today. She said, I imagine they didn't know. I think it's as simple as that. For many people who have the deep sadness and grief of losing a baby, there was also that moment of joy when they wanted to announce their pregnancy. I can understand how people feel. It can be deeply hurtful but I have to be sure they had no idea of the significance of the day. Kensington Palace declined to comment. International Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day marks pregnancy loss and infant death, including miscarriage, stillbirth, sudden infant death syndrome and any death of a newborn. It is observed each year in the UK, Canada, the US, Norway, Italy and Kenya, as well as the Australian states of Western Australia and New South Wales. Last night, Meghan and Harry arrived in Sydney for the start of their first global royal tour which will see them take in Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. As well as being International Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day, today, October 15, also marks the end of Baby Loss Awareness Week, which began on October 9 and remembers the lives of babies lost in pregnancy or soon after birth. They've been basking in that newlywed glow for months but it seems that Harry and Meghan may have experienced a rare moment of discord on Eugenie's big day at St. George's Chapel. As the pair waited for the ceremony to begin in St. George's Chapel, the Duchess of Sussex seemed to be telling off her husband as a fidgeting Harry interrupted his wife as she chatted to Zaratino. She fired a few words back at him and briefly gesticulates before turning away from him to continue speaking with Zara. Lip readers' accounts of the conversation were inconclusive due to Harry turning his head to the side as he spoke to Meghan. At one point the couple appeared to be discussing the chapel, the same one they were wed in, as Harry said, everything's different. To which Meghan snapped back, yes, of course, that's the way. She then appeared to gesture with her hands at how full the venue was as she said, fill up as much. But body language expert Judy James noted their strained poses and facial expressions. She told Fennell, Harry appears to be anxious and fidgety when they sit in their pew seats, rocking about and fiddling with the tails of his jacket. Meghan looks calmer and politely sociable, chatting in a much more demure way to Zara in the seat in front. Harry starts to talk to her and she performs a subtle eye dart to her left a bit like a mother whose kid is trying to interrupt her grown-up conversation. She turns to Harry and seems to have a slightly firmer conversation, raising her hands and then bringing them together and using a small head baton gesture for emphasis. Meghan leans back towards Zara, resuming her polite social smile along with their conversation. Harry rubs his face, chews his lips and leans into the side of his seat like a child that has just been told to sit still. 
The clip begins with Prince Harry shifting from side to side in his seat then fiddling with his trouser pockets. After Meghan appears to tell him off he looks sheepish and flustered, tugging on his suit jacket. Meanwhile, viewers were surprised that Prince William and Kate were showing more physical affection than normal. Kate's hand could be seen resting underneath her husband's as they waited patiently for Princess Eugenie to arrive at the chapel. Crowds of well-wishers gathered outside Windsor Castle to witness the 28-year-old's wedding to Jack Brooks Bank, 30. And scores of celebrities were seen filing into the chapel yesterday, where Prince Harry and Meghan wed just five months earlier. Jimmy Carr, Liv Tyler and Naomi Campbell were among the famous faces who braved the gusty winds, which whipped off a few guests' hats.